Well, I don't know to you tater totters. <coughs> Hey, bear with me here. I am trying to figure this shit out. So this is Hill Willie Dave, video number two. Uh, I still don't know what happened to my last video. I'm, I'm trying to figure this crazy phone out I'm using. It's even blinking at me now like why I shut it off last time. So I guess it's working. It got everything last time, so. I don't know, I'm just gonna let it run this time. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> I'm back. Still can't have a talk. Still got my cup. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is weird because I have no idea what the volume is at. <clears throat> I ain't figured that part out. I'm going to figure out the brightness and starting and stopping. And I even figured out the editing slightly yesterday, but I'm not going to worry too much about editing in my videos because I'm just going to be talking and stuff. I'm not going to be getting too crazy. <clears throat> but I do wish I could figure this volume out better because I noticed when I clear my throat and stuff it sounded like it was flaring but right now I was talking I, I could have the volume all the way up and it sounded like it was low like I should have it louder like right now I know you're not hearing me good but I don't know what to do about it so I'm trying to speak up but it's hard of them stupid teeth thing it's like handy capable here like I don't even know I try to enunciate but it's hard to do with no teeth take your teeth out sometime and try to talk clearly it's not easy to do and that's why I'm here with you because I can't do that I do have false teeth, but I'm not going to wear it for these videos because I'm here Lily Dave. Why in the hell do I want to pronunciate and sound just like everybody else? Oh, fuck that. I took my teeth out. I'm going to talk like this. My wife used to fucking kick out of it. She loved it. We used to drink when we first started dating and everything before we got married, and she would be rolling. I'd have her eyes freaking. She would just be crying she was laughing so hard she's a trip she's Hopi Indian and Mexican so she's beautiful a little crazy very outgoing she's awesome and somehow she likes me for whatever reason I don't care, I just got her, so I'm happy. <laughs> Consider myself lucky. But, where did I leave off? My dad. Talking about growing up in Bristol. <clears throat> My dad, he was a hillbilly. He's that old stereotypical thing. He walked Bringing five miles uphill both ways in the snow to go to school and stuff. All that was true. That's what he did. He had to walk all the way to the end of his holler to catch a bus. And he grew up on uh, it's kind of a farm, but it wasn't a farm, it was just their home. But my grandmother did have half, well, about two-thirds of the backyard was all a garden. <clears throat> so, they were in the water. 
only water line they ever had to that house was what my dad did when he was a teenager back in the 50s, 60s, somewhere in there. <clears throat> he got out and by hand dug a cistern and made his own concrete and rock and made like well cisterns what he always called it it was just a circular thing he built uh, there was two of them one was beside the house catch water one was he dug a hole that was built like basically in the ground to catch water and put a pipe from the bottom of it coming out up through the ground and into the house so the weight of the water pushing down to this one point to this little half inch pipe is what it was gravity fed it pushed the water up into the house and he put a sink in the kitchen that's how my grandmother was able to start doing dishes in the house and stuff But before that, they had to carry all their water from the creek. The way the, the property was, they had the house. It went a little ways, wasn't too far. It was kind of a normal distance, I guess. Well, depending on where you're from, right up in there, it was like a short distance down to the bridge that went over the creek to the road to go down the holler and there was a cave across the street that was a whole other story that was a trip me and my brother used to go climb down in it and stuff and fart around when we got a little older and stuff but my dad was always saying watch for snakes watch for snakes a little bit So we had to kind of sneak off when we went down there to play, and we were always paranoid of snakes. And my dad warned us every time we went over, watch for snakes, watch for snakes. I never really seen a snake. But there were snakes up there. And. So anyway, my dad made his own water to the house and then he had to go back out through the yard and away because people didn't build their outhouse right outside the door people didn't want to smell that shit literally so you put the outhouse like downwind away from the house and shit that was fancy it was a two seater me and my brother could go in there at the same time and take a shit it was funny <clears throat> so, since I was a child, as far back as I can remember, from like two years old up until he finally sold that house, my uncle did when he was, when I was 16. That's because it was falling in. It was built by my grandfather back in the day. He built it back in the 30s, 40s, something like that, whenever. And. grandfather was a carpenter by trade but before I get into that my dad he put himself through school my uncle never went to school you know, back in the day back then in the 40s and stuff 40s and 50s you didn't want to go to school you didn't go to school some kids wanted to go to school and the parents was like no you're staying at home you got to help with the family you got to help with the farm you got to help whatever they would not make you go to school back then. But my dad wanted to go to school. So he would get himself up. He would get himself dressed. He would walk to the fucking bus. And he, did, he put himself through school all by himself. He said no help from my grandmother. 
She wouldn't get up. She wouldn't make them nothing to eat. She wouldn't get them dressed. To, she didn't do anything people do nowadays with their kids. He single-handedly put him through, put himself through high school and got a high school diploma all by himself. He built a water cistern when he was old enough, when he was a teenager, for my grandmother, so she'd have water. <clears throat> and then, after he graduated, he joined the service. He went into the Navy. <clears throat> but before he left, he built a rock garage and another cistern, like I said, but above ground cistern to catch water in. He built a two car garage all out of rock <clears throat> and had a two by four roof. He built himself. He just was a bare basic roof. He just like run some boards up to the middle at a center two by four in the middle for it to come to a few simple basic ends or whatever to hold the whole thing up and then inside in the middle of the garage he put a four by four going straight up to hold the roof up He made sure to get that done before he went into the military. So he put himself through high school. He joined the military. He did his time. He did like, I think he said back then it was two years or whatever. He did like two years in the Navy. Active. He didn't do guard and stuff. He went active. And got out, honorable discharge, and came back home. And <clears throat> then uh, my grandfather, he's told me the story. My grandfather, I don't know how he got in the service. I don't know the full story. I'm not sure, 100% sure how all this played out, but the only thing I know about my grandfather is I seen one document, like it was a discharge paper or entrance. I don't remember which. I think it was a discharge paper. And it was dated 1943 or 44, somewhere right in there. I want to say it might have been 44. It was around Pearl Harbor thing. Or Storm and Normandy, whatever. Anyway, all that I know about my grandfather is he was in around World War II. Went in active just like my dad. And he was on a battleship. And they had kamikaze planes trying to destroy the ship. And they managed to shoot down one of the planes, their ship or another ship or combined or something. They shot down a plane and shrapnel from the plane took about two-thirds of my grandfather's calf off. He just, I mean, just lopped a big chunk of his calf of his leg off. And I've seen it one time. My grandfather wore slacks and button-up shirt. He always, you know, people back then dressed up. Nowadays, it don't matter fucking if you got a desk job. Nowadays, people think you can just wear blue jeans and a t-shirt, and that's cool. Hoo -hoo. No, back then, people took pride. They dressed up. Even just go out and work in the garden. You had on, like, dress pants and fucking shirt, button-up shirt and stuff. Some people did, you know. Anyway, 
The one time he was putting on his shoes or something, I remember he pulled up his pants leg and there was nothing there. It was crazy looking. It said like a big full blown calf muscle there. That'd be say for example it was like this. He had like this. He just had like this one chunk of meat up the back of his calf. And it was just bone. It was round bone, just like the arm or something here. He just seemed like it was just flat bone, no muscle. And then one part was like a chunk of meat up this bone. And the story is, is my grandfather got shell-shocked from that. They said he went through like 12 surgeries to put his leg back together and for him to use it again and all this shit. And he spent seven years in a mental institution. And then once he got out from that, he was off in the head. I mean, he could carry a normal conversation on. He acted normal, but he was nuts. He'd have these bouts of rage and what we now know as PTSD and shit. He, was, he had post-traumatic stress and stuff. And he'd have these flashbacks and just rage. He used to get arrested about once a week for assault. And everybody knew him and they knew he was off in the head and he was a wit. So they left him alone. They would arrest him. They'd take him to jail and then just release him and let him go home. <clears throat> and then... But he had these adrenaline rushes when he... He, was a, he wasn't a huge man or nothing. He was... He was like, he was about 5'10", probably, I think, 5'10", 5'11"-ish, somewhere in there. He was like 180 or something. You know, he wasn't skin and bones, but he wasn't a huge, big muscular either. He, in our family... Me, my dad, and my grandfather, none of us were huge. None of us looked like big weightlifters and stuff, but we got more muscle and mass or whatever. So even though we look normal, we always weighed more than we look. Like before I started getting my gut and everything, I'm bigger now. You can tell it, my neck, my little spot, my shit, or whatever, you know. But anyway, when I was younger, I was skinny. But I always weighed more than I look like. <clears throat> People looked at me and said, oh, you weigh like 145. I was like 5'11 and weighed 145 pounds. My mom's nickname for me was Beanpole. She was, I was like a twig and shit, and she just called me Beanpole. And then when I started working, I started putting on muscle. So I get getting stronger and stronger, but I never got bigger. Like not traditional big, like big old bulky muscles and blah 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 and all this. I was still skinny, but I had these big old calf muscles. My calves were like stout, toned, defined muscles. Always skinny, stomach was flat, no abs. I never could get abs, even though I exercised like a motherfucker. I lived on my bicycle growing up. I rode my bicycle probably 20 miles a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I was always on my bicycle. <clears throat> anyway, get back on topic. My grandfather was around 180. Five and nine, and his neighbor 
had a kid, this is a story my dad told me when he was young, when he was a teenager. He said that the, the neighbor lived across from where my grandfather, oh my gosh, that story just keeps going and going and going. My grandfather and my grandmother, just, they didn't even live together. My grandfather lived in a trailer down the house, down the road from where my grandmother and my dad and my uncle were at because, like I said, he had rage problems and stuff, so they, they didn't get along. My grandfather was always trying to beat the hell out of my grandmother so they couldn't live together. Never got divorced. They never married their whole lives. But they couldn't live together. They lived on separate properties on the same street. So they could be married. My grandfather could still see, me, see his kids. And my dad and my uncle. So anyway. story is, is. Like I said, my grandfather was a little bit off in the head and stuff. So he got it in his head. That the neighbor's son was coming and messing with his car, stealing his gas, or trying to put sugar in his gas, or just messing with his car. So he came out one day, or whatever, I don't remember. Anyway, the story is he caught the neighbor's son coming on the property, or leaving the property, or just walking down the street or something, and he flipped out on him. And I was starting to beat his ass, and oh my gosh, I'll, I'll kill you, and blah blah blah. And the kid went running to his dad because he was scared my grandfather could be mean. And he ran up and got his dad and stuff. So a few months later, five or ten minutes later, here comes the guy, the kid's dad, down the hill, and he was big. My dad said this guy was like six three, weighed. Probably 220, 230 or something like that, about 50 pounds of meat on him. <clears throat> he comes barreling down there. He goes straight up to my grandfather. And they're on the property line. And there's like a single lane road that went up and down this. It was a dead end holler. And uh, so it wasn't a big wide road or nothing, but it had, a, you know, big enough for one car to go up and down the road. And. It was on my grandfather's property, at the edge of the property, but in the grass on his property. And he's like, what are you throwing to my son for? And blah, blah, blah. My son ain't touched your car. You're just being paranoid. And blah, blah, blah. He's running his mouth. Like, he didn't, he, my dad said he wasn't trying to provoke a fight. He wasn't cussing him out or anything, but he was defending his son. And he finally said the wrong thing or called my grandfather a liar one too many times. Saying, no, he didn't do it. And whatever. And my dad said my grandfather just reached out and went, boom! And just thumped him right in the middle of the chest. So this 50-pound bigger guy and everything, this guy was almost twice my grandfather's size and everything, muscular and all this crap. My dad said he just went stumbling all the way across the road until he finally gave up trying to catch his balance and fell down on the other side of the road. Like, after he stumbled for 10, 15 feet or something, or whatever, he finally fell down. And that was the end of that. He didn't want no more. That was just the way my grandfather was. He wasn't a big man, but he was in shape. He was a carpenter for a living. And he was crazy. He had these adrenaline rushes or whatever. Like he could take a person's head off in one punch if he wanted to. Even though he wasn't a big guy, he wasn't nobody to play with. So anyway. I see this video is running a mile long. Oh my gosh. I'm going to cut this for now. So this is Hillbilly Dave. And I'm just rambling, telling stories here. If you like it, cool. If not, who will? So 
the Pukini. Check me out. I'll talk to y'all later, taters.